Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make jewels. Jewels is actually this bowl here. It's collapsible so actually you can fold it away, pop it in a drawer, forget about it till the next time you need it. Now this particular month that I'm making these patterns uh, they are Christmas themed but obviously you could make jewels in any fabric you like so it's all year round of course. So you've got the full instructions in the pattern pieces here and you've got pictures as well plus this little video to show you how to put jewels together. It's actually a really easy project. Um, so if I pop the one I've made just there we can start. So the first thing you need to do is obviously cut the pattern piece out and it's a really funny old shape. There it is there, a bit like a half a petal or something. Got everything on, you need on here. So all the positions for the little loops that you're going to put on there, the extra piece that you're going to stitch down from here, and also the zip. Now you might wonder why we have a zip and it's on the bottom of the, of the actual bowl. If I tip it up, you'll perhaps just about see it there. Um, and the reason for that is because of the delicate shape and all the curves that we're stitching here, we need somewhere to turn the whole thing through. And I thought the easiest thing to do is to install a zip. Now with mine, I've installed the zip on the underside of the bowl. If you wish, you can put it on the inside of the bowl. I'll leave that choice to you, but I'm gonna carry on the same as the, the one that I've made, which is putting the zip in the bottom. And actually, it kind of makes things a little bit easier because all the markings that you need to do uh, are actually on the same piece of fabric. So um, if I get all my bits and pieces over here, so this is the lining piece, which is exactly the same fabric as the outer piece, and that's it already cut. And actually I can discard this for quite some time until I prepare my, uh, my outer piece of fabric. It isn't stabilized, um, it's just the, the cotton fabric as is and I've pinned it together. You won't be able to see this possibly, uh, maybe you can, but there's three pins. If I wave it about, they'll shine. And those are holding all the layers together because when you fold your fabric, so you're cutting a big square, when you fold your fabric and then you're folding it again, you want that fabric to be really snugly into each other. Otherwise your, your petals will all be different sizes. I mean, it doesn't matter a huge amount, but it's nice to have a little bit of accuracy sometimes. So we'll just pop the pins away and then I'll open this up so you can see. But this is just the inside of the bowl. It's the, it's the lining piece, but I'm doing mine the same all the way around. What I want you to do, um, not necessarily with the lining, but I really want you to crease that center part here, okay, on the outside piece. The piece is stabilized. Now I always use uh, the same stabilizer, I'm a little boring, I use uh, a Vaseline uh, H250, it's a medium weight iron-on interfacing or um, stabilizer, and I'm sure you'll find an equivalent wherever you are in the world. So like I said, if we look at it on the overhead, um, you'll be able to see that it's really well creased. Uh, when I folded this together, I really made a good job of creasing that center. So you can see um, it's got those marks there, which will allow me to position all my other pieces uh, that I need. And, and on the back, as you can see, hopefully, I've actually drawn on this with a heat erasable pen. So when we look at the actual pattern, and it's important that you know this, so I've placed this over the top. You can see exactly what I've done. I have folded this back on that end line there. So I've folded it back and I've made my mark and I've been able to draw the, the box in for the zip. So obviously on the other side, if I was to flip that over, um, again, all, I'm going, all I've done is actually lined up this base here of the, the zip placement and I've made my, my box with a zip. So we'll do that in just a second. And likewise with these elongated pieces here, we're actually going to stitch um, all the way down here and round. And in the pattern, it shows you very clearly how to stitch around that. And then you're going to cut into that. So where you've marked with the pen, we're actually going to cut that at the very end when we stitch it together. But you can see again, if I was to line my pattern piece up, um, all I've done is I've got my pen, I, I don't have a pen to hand, but I've gone straight through the pattern piece and I've really marked it well. I've actually made a hole there, I've made a hole there, and then I've drawn my line from the point out to, to there. And it's important that you see that bit. The other bit that's also very important is on the actual right side. Now this you may not be able to see very well, 
because of the fabric and I don't really want to mark it so so you can see it and then it ru ruins my bowl but there are two marks here okay you, and like I say I doubt whether you'll see them but there's two marks there's one here and there's one here and that's where we're going to put the loop that actually um, put you put your ribbon through so if I show you the original let's bring that up and you can see these little loops um, that's where that placement line is um, for those and again you're just going to pop your pattern piece um, let's get it so it's properly set up you're going to put your pattern piece on your 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 main piece that you've cut out see where the dot is there I folded that back and I've marked my fabric and then I folded it back again because I can see the black marks through my print and you'll be the same and I've marked it there so I've got every one of those marked out where the placement of the loop is and I thought that was really important to show you that to make it really clear of how you're going to mark your fabric up okay so the, the, the first thing we're going to do is actually cut into our box now um, I have a simple way of doing that um, obviously I've drawn my box out so this is half an inch across here it's not quite in the center but I'm not going to lose sleep about it um, I'm going to just fold it in half like this and then I'm just going to cut into it to get my first um, line if you like and then I'm just going to cut up to that little point there and I'm going to go out to each corner um, there we are and if you've followed me before and you've seen my patterns before we have done this before and it's a quite a nice little technique of putting in a really nice neat zip in, in a box really like a letter box and again I snipped so I've got my opening here and my little ends the great thing about quilters tape and I've put this in the instructions that you need some quilters tape is to that you can stick these pieces down so if I cut a, a length probably haven't cut it long enough we won't worry too much you're cutting a length for that side and again for this side and, and give it a good squidge so it it actually the glue sticks to the fabric and then at the end where those little pieces are um, there give that a squidge as well and again and like I say, I, I probably haven't cut these long enough, but I, I'm not going to worry too much. But you might want to bring this right up to here. Um, and then you're going to peel those pieces back and reveal the glue. Let's just make a little heap of backing papers here. So our glue is now revealed. And you'll see this on the pattern itself. Uh, the one that I made all, all, all very clear to see so all you're going to do then is just going to lift these little pieces up fold them back on the the glue and again on this side there we go and then fold this back there we go and fold that back as well so that's made our letterbox and it's really nice and secure but the next thing we need to do is obviously to put the zip in so if I fold that over turn this over you can see how that's going to go so I've already got my zip here now my zip is obviously far too long but that's okay and just make sure that you bring the slider in um, perhaps not as far as that maybe to there um, and then I want you to put some more tape let's just trim that back because that is quite long um, and I do tell you in the pattern how, how much uh, you need of a zip but I use zip on a roll and I get kind of blasé about using tons of it and then a, another strip of glue and take it this time way beyond the, the little letter box there the little box that you've made um, because this is going to hold our zip in place when we stitch it so again give it a, a push down make sure that glue is well bonded onto your fabric take the backing off there we go and then don't forget your your zip slider goes through there and it wants to be on the outside so I'm just going to make sure that my zip teeth are in the middle of my box as best as I can I might have to readjust it a little bit and that glue those glue strips are holding that down really very nicely again I'm just bringing my teeth together at the top 
So if we flip that over, hopefully that's fairly straight. Yeah, we can get away with that one. So that's not bad. And then we're just going to top stitch all that because although that's glued, that's just a temporary fix really because we now need to top stitch it. So I'm going to go away and get my zipper foot on my machine and I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, zipper foot is on. So I'm going to go around the outside of my box as the top stitch. Um, so try and get your threads to match because oh, to be honest, you're not going to see it because it's going to go, be on the bottom. Um, but it's always nice to have things to match. So let's just bring this in a little bit. So um, maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, and just, just a couple of uh, stitches going around that corner there and going over. Now be careful when you're going over the zip teeth. Um, it, it might be that your machine will stutter. My machine does, it doesn't matter how much money they cost. <laughs> they are temperamental beasts. So again, come down the long side, nice neat top stitch. And just, there we go. Careful over those zip teeth and there we go one more stitch all the way down that long side i'm going to get my scissors ready because i've got a thread there that i don't want to see and all the way down and then i never ever do a back stitch i tend to go over the stitches that i've just done two or three is enough and then cut your threads so we've done the zip that's nicely installed now so I don't think I've got anything to cut away not at all but I'm going to remember I'm going to leave that zip open so that zip is now open I don't want to forget so I might as well open it now it's not going to get in the way so now we've got the zip installed we need to put those loops on you need right you, you got the measurements of how to make the tubing Okay, so it's just quite a small piece of tubing that you need. Um, that's the width of it, tells you in the instructions. Right sides together and you're going to stitch all the way down that long edge. Depending on what turning tools you have, you may want to stitch across one of these short ends to be able to put your turning tool through, or you may not. You know what you've got at home to be able to turn that tube. And then you're going to try and put the seam to the back of the loop. So if I hold one of these up might not be easy to see but the seam is down <laughs> I'll, I'll get John to zoom in the seam is down the center it's just neat and tidy now I've just cut a raw edge on here I don't think it's that necessary to make this super super neat if you want to turn this over and you know make it a folded edge and you're going to stitch that down great but allow for that in the measurements because I haven't and I'll tell you why because I'm going to do a zigzag so I'll just swap my foot over and I'll pop this one on let's have a look there we go so a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on youtube that you can have a little look at That's it. Um, and then we're going to zigzag across those raw ends. Now, where you've got the zip uh, at the back, uh, the, you know, the underneath of the, of the bowl, I want to make a little bridge to go over that because that's going to go on my furniture and I don't want it to scratch. If you've got a nice wooden table, you don't want that zip slider digging into it. So I'm putting a little bridge. So you've got enough to make eight little loops going all the way around and you'll have a spare piece seriously the same sort of size maybe a wee bit bigger to go to make yourself a bridge so it's going to go over the zip slider so i'm going to change to a zigzag i think that's probably about the right width and length and i'm going to position it over the slider so i'm going to zigzag over one 
part. I'm going to get the slider out of the way. In fact, let's do it so it's on the closed end. That might be really handy. And I'm just going to position it. I want it to be a loop. I don't want it to be flat. So I'm going to stitch fairly close. Um, so let's see. Let's see if I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm zigzagging over my raw edge. And that's what I, I'm, I'm really, really comfortable with that. This is not like a garment where you're going to wear it. This is going to be a practical bowl. So I'm happy with that. So I've zigzagged one side. I'm just going to flip it over. I have got a couple of raw um, threads sticking up there, which I'm not happy about. So on this side, I'm just going to lift it up slightly. I don't know if you can see. Let me move it out of the light. There we go. You can see it now. So do you see, I'm just lifted it up slightly. So it's like a little bridge for that zip slider to go under. And obviously you've got to think about it's going to be the zip is going to be closed so you need to make sure you're putting it on the right end and do a little back stitch just to hold and then just beyond that a wee bit and that's me done and like I say I'm really happy with that you may not be so allow for turning if you want but consider you've got to make uh, eight so that's 16 extra pieces um, and also this as well so that's my little bridge done there we go you can see it there lovely so when my zip is closed that sits very neatly under the bridge and it doesn't spoil my furniture but remember open your zip because that's this is where we're going to turn the whole thing through so all I've got to do now is place eight of these on my petals so I think I'll do one and then you can come back so again place it where you did the dots remember we did the dots I'm going to back stitch as well for security I'm going to do all the top ones first I'm going to go around the whole bowl and I'm going to do all of the top ones first and then I'll come back and go around again and do the bottom ones and you don't need an, a little bridge don't don't think that that's going to be the same because it's not so I'll carry on with this I'll see you in a bit so I've just got one more to do so I've gone around all the tops and now I've nearly completed all of the bottom zigzagging on the loops so I'm just stretching my thread across instead of breaking off and I'm just zigzagging across that bottom the bottom part of the loop so there we are that's that one done so we've gone around twice all around the tops all around the bottoms I'll show you in a sec so I just cut my threads and like I say you might want to do it slightly different to me or exactly the same there we go make sure that all the threads are cut which they are so if I hold that up now you'll be able to see that we've got loops on every petal and that's ready to take our ribbon to actually draw it up so the next thing we're going to do is actually stitch the two pieces together now of course you might want to pin all these so right sides together make sure that zip is open and just pop them down together and this is where you'll find out if your cutting was accurate because they should all fit obviously but they might all wriggle so let's just make sure they fit I do hurrah that's not too bad there uh, we, we can get away with that and again that's all down to the folding of the fabric so don't forget uh, go from the side with the stabilizer because you've drawn on that and you need to stitch like I said before you need to stitch um, down a quarter of an inch away from that line that you've drawn and then back up I'm trying to show you there what I mean and um, that's going to give you the petals going further in so I'm just going to kind of go for it and we go all the way round so it doesn't matter where you start so we'll just bring the machine in and let's just not do a zigzag okay and a little back stitch so you're just going around the whole thing so don't forget to make that stitch length a little bit longer Um, on the curves you could actually have a short um, stitch 
but I want to do this quickly for you. So I'm coming down the lines that I've drawn and I'm coming sort of into it like a dart. I'm going to put my needle down and then I'm going to come up the other side. And it shows you really clearly in the pattern what that looks like. So I'm just literally following the curves of the petal. Yeah, and you may, I mean, they're not big curves, but you may want to stop, readjust, move your fabric, move your, you know, pivot your needle down. We're just coming round to those points again and then back up. And just check at this time to make sure you've opened that zip. Look, listen, I'm telling you this for your own good. Because if you get to the end and you haven't opened the zip, oh, hold on, we've missed a petal. Bear with. If you haven't opened that zip up, you'll be in big trouble. There we go. I just missed that piece there. Let's just get my scissors on that. So this is where if you'd pinned it, you'd have been fine. I wasn't watching. I'm doing this quickly for you. It's your fault. <laughs> so let's just start from that piece again. So we're all right at the point. We just start again. There we go. So around. You just follow the lines of the petals. Just move your fabric gently. About a quarter of an inch. But don't uh, worry too much if it's not exact. I think I'm probably going a little bit over my quarter of an inch. Just make sure this is all lined up nicely. Down the drawn line, as I said, about a quarter of an inch either side of that drawn line. And here we go again. Okay, so they're nice gentle curves. So I think you can move it and stitch at the same time. But like I said, if you do a small stitch, it really does make a difference to your curves. So just coming around the last bit now. And we started here, so. So that's stitched all the way around. So we've got one complete petal. So now we're going to cut into these lines that you drew and just go a little bit further and then it'll turn nicely. Um, another top tip, if you've got pinking shears, just run around the edge of this with your pinking shears um, because it'll, it'll turn, the petals will turn better and there'll be um, a, a lot more curvy if you like because there's less fabric so each one of these we're cutting into there we go and just like I say make sure you have gone as far as you dare into the points and if you want to just snip into those petals just to give them a chance of folding nicely inside the project so right sides together we've done that now so all you're going to do is turn through so you've already got your turning gap where, where the the zip is that's the idea of having the zip so each one of these petals is going to get turned through so I'll tell you what I'll do that then I'll come back to you and I've done it so I've turned all my petals through I've given them a really good press and of course now you can see how the sides all fold in to the center and make a, an octagon and there we are so that's how it folds flat <laughs> neat isn't it the, the last thing we need to do is to actually stitch the right at the edges of these uh, folds here um, because that's what makes it stand beautifully it's got a little bit of a stitch line um i'd say less than an eighth of an inch um, but not quite a sixteenth but it's a small it just holds all those layers together so you're actually stitching on the outside you're not stitching the inside nearly all of the work we've done has been on the outside so I'm just going to literally run my machine around all eight sides and just turning as we go just be careful you don't catch a petal 
So fingers crossed that we don't. But because we're stitching this fold line, it will allow it to it will allow it to stand nicely. That's what I'm trying to say. So around all the edges. And then the last thing is to thread the the ribbon through. So hopefully you've got some really nice pretty ribbon. I'm just going to check to make sure there's not a petal there. There we go. Um, yeah, so maybe you've got some nice pretty ribbon. And so don't forget, although this is Christmas themed, um, you can do this with just your regular cotton fabric. It doesn't have to be Christmas themed at all. It's just that's what the theme is for this particular month for my patterns. So just checking. Yeah, I'm just coming back to where I started. Little back stitch there because we want it to, to hold. There we are. And I'm just going to trim those threads away. There, super. So now that's going to give it some sort of shape, really. It gives it an edge. Um, it gives it quite a nice finish. You can, oh, you can see beautifully. And look, there's my zip underneath. Um, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Anyway, I've got my ribbon handy. So it doesn't matter where you start, but obviously where you start is where you finish. So just threading it through the loops and I've asked I've said two inches wide and obviously the loops aren't two inches wide it kind of gathers it up a little bit and um, I'm using wired ribbon here so I don't know how it's going to behave so you're just going to thread it through so you, you want a, a wide ribbon you don't want it to be a scant ribbon so we're just pulling that through so it will be about there and I've said 30 inches because that seemed to be the right sort of length to what I wanted for the for the bowl. But you could make it longer. The longer you make it, the flatter the bowl will lie. The shorter your ribbon, the higher the sides. OK, that makes any sense. I haven't done um, and, you know, I'm not going to do a big, huge, fancy bow on this. You could do just a knot. Um, especially if you're using lovely Christmas ribbon. Right, so I've come back to the petal next to where I've started, you can see. Okay, and I'm just going to, well, I'm just kind of eyeballing it a bit, but I'm just going to knot that. There we go. And that's all I'm going to do. Because it's wide ribbon, that'll stay. Give it a little scrunch there, make it attractive. And then you will just want to arrange your petals so they're kind of folding over each other. And just sort of spread them out equally. So that one's over, that one's not over, that one's over, that one's over. That one's not over. There we go. So there we are. So there's our bowl done. There's another jewels done. Um, and like I say, you might want to make your ribbon longer because that way it'll it'll fold out more, it'll be more sort of shallow if you like. If you tighten this ribbon up, it'll go further up. So it could be quite nice to actually put a plant inside that or fill it with sweets, cakes, bread rolls, all sorts of different things. So that is our jewels. So you can either make it for Christmas and put, I've got potpourri in there, or you can make it for your barbecues and put your bread rolls in, but either which way it's going to be really useful. So this is a downloadable pattern on my website, lizzycurtis.com. And I'll be very pleased if you go and have a take a look and see what you think and try and make loads.